Hi everyone, I'm Manu Kakopian and I am very pleased to be joined by undefeated UFC star Ilya Teporia. Ilya, you have a huge fight on your hands February 17 because you're getting ready to take on featherweight king and champion Alexander Volkanovsky to headline UFC 298. But before we get into all of the big fight storylines, and as you know, there are quite a few significant ones that we'll eventually cover, let's set the scene real quick. In the three years you've been in the UFC, six fights, and you've quickly set yourself up for this featherweight title shot. For some of the fans who are starting to follow your journey now, who might have jumped on the bandwagon a little late, how would you like to reintroduce yourself? Who is Ilya Tapuria? Ilya is El Matador Tapuria. Ilya is a undefeated fighter coming from nothing, going for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you definitely have a great rags to riches story. What have you learned from yourself throughout this journey, beating everyone along the way and pounding the table for this title shot? So I have learned that it doesn't matter where you come from if you know where you are going and it's much more important what's in front of you than what's behind you. Mm -hmm. And you have to enjoy every moment because it's a gift. Every morning we, we wake up and we don't have to give for granted anything in this life. And we just have to be thankful with, with God for with everything he's giving us. Mm -hmm. That's, you, have roots. you have roots all over the place, all over the world. Being kind of this international uh, fighter, uh, per se, what has that process been like where you've always found a, a home base for yourself to to continue your career and carve a name for yourself. Eh, que me preguntó, no, no entiendo. Que vos tenés muchas raíces por todo el mundo, que sí. es un peleo internacional. Que como, teniendo casa por todos lados, pues, ¿cómo se sí. siente? Yeah, it feels amazing, man. It feels amazing. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm highly blessed to, to feel all that, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How has training and preparing for your first UFC title shot been different for you this camp than in previous camps? What is different about you now? So, of course, the feeling is a little bit different because I'm I'm fighting for finally for my dream, which is to become a UFC world champion. I can tell you that it was the toughest training camp I ever had, but I can tell you that it was the most professional training camp I, I ever had. Because of everything we learned in the past, we applicated in, in this one. And I feel re ready and prepared to, to take what's mine. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of fighters, they always say, this is my hardest training camp. This is my best. Uh, do you feel that Volkanovski, he's lost two out of his last three fights in, in different fashions to Islam Makhachev? One competitive, one landslide knockout. What is your assessment of his performances? Are you taking him seriously this fight? You, of course, I'm taking him serious, and I, I, I respect him a lot. And the, the respect I have for him, I show it in every training sessions I do. I'm the first one to show up and the last one to leave it. So, of course, I respect him. If I wouldn't, I wouldn't train so train so hard. You know, I accept the challenge I have in front, and I'm coming with everything. And about his last performances, I don't know if he had a, a, a good performance. He, he's competing in the in a really high level. So it's easy to talk well, when you're in your couch, but when you go inside the cage, it's a little bit different. So he had a great performance. He was a, one of the greatest in the fairway division. And I'm really pleasured to beat someone like him. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an honor. The reason I asked about the if, about the respect is because Volkanovski says you've been over cocky throughout the buildup of this fight, and he wants to humble you to the point of embarrassment. Uh, I, I know you've been. I've heard some of your other interviews, and you have been confident about how so the people call it, the people call it arrogance, and that I'm overconfident. I I call it faith. I have a lot of faith that I'm going to beat him. Because I know my skills. I know that I'm better than him anywhere. I'm, I'm a better fighter. I'm a, I'm a, I represent the new generation of MMA. I'm going to show the next level of this game. I'm going to show the evolution of this game. So it's time to move on. He's old. He already achieved everything in, 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 in the division. 
he won the title, he defended, he moved up to the next weight class, he tried, he lost, and now it's time to move on. Uh, now it's time for the new blog. It's mm -hmm. my time. It's a new era of Apuria right now. Do you consider him an all-time great? All-time great? I don't know. There is space for everyone, you know? We, we had a lot of greats in the fairway division. We had Jose Aldo. We had Conor McGregor. We had Alexander Volkanovsky. Now you're going to have me. So there is space for everyone, you know? One of the greatest, I don't know. But uh, without any doubt, you will be in that list. Mm -hmm. How do you see this fight unfolding? So I see myself dominate him everywhere. Um, like I told you before, I'm better than him. So this is how I see knock him out in the first round. I will be dancing on February 17th. You're mm -hmm. going to see. We, we we saw Alexander, he was going through some mental health issues in his last fight. He asked for uh, the UFC to keep him active. You, it, again, it sounds like you might, your promise, it sounds almost as if you're promising a, re, a beating into retirement, perhaps. Is is that the kind of vicious fight you're, you're uh, imagining here? So... Uh... I don't wish him that. Uh, I would recommend him to bounce back once again. He's going to have to bounce back. Uh, but without any doubt, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to make him feel that he don't going to have a chance to, to win the UFC belt well, when I'll be, I will be around mm -hmm. the division. So if I live, he's going to have the chance again. But until I will be there, because mm -hmm. he, yeah. he looked respectable against Makhachev, a very disputable decision, many regarded. You're promising a beating that's not even going to uh, merit a rematch, it sounds like. Yeah, exactly. The way I'm going to beat him, they don't want to even ask me for a rematch. And he's old. It's, uh, I get told it's time to move on. That's it. He has his, his time to shine. Now it's a different time. Mm -hmm. You've previously fought at lightweight. How long do you foresee a future for yourself at featherweight if you win this title? So I, I see myself moving up to moving up to the next division. So we'll see uh, what the future is holding for me. I, I I'm just fo really focused on this one, and after this fight, I will sit down with the UFC, with my team, and we're gonna take a decision. We'll see what's gonna happen. I don't know, I don't know, but something big, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. you, you've already stated that Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez, Brian Ortega, these guys... No, there is, there is no way. I'm, 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 I will not be fighting with guys that they already lost three times with the guy that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat. You know, it doesn't make any sense. So I, I will be looking for new challengers and I'm going to refresh the division. Mm -hmm. New face, new new king to carry. Yeah, that, we we need new faces. We we need to cut the 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 bad grass and let mm -hmm. another ones to, to grow up. Uh, uh, another new another new face, bantamweight champion Sean O'Malley. It seems like he would want to come up to featherweight to fight you. Would you consider giving him a chance for the title to become a double champ, maybe? Look, now he's fighting with Cheeto. If he defends against Cheeto and he he face with Merab, which is one of the clearest challengers in the division, and he proves that he's the best in his division, I will fight him. Of course I will. But he has a lot more to prove in, in his division. No, that's the problem. I'm gonna beat someone in, in uh, I'm gonna beat someone who dominate everyone in my division. So he has to do that. He has to dominate everyone because he didn't fight with any really dominate champion, you know. So if he proves that he's the man and he wants to come up and and have the challenge, of course, of course, I'm gonna give him the the chance and the opportunity to face me and to fight for the second title. But before that, of course not, because he has a lot to prove. And you're already calling out the likes of Conor McGregor at lightweight. What yeah. kind of 
promises an insurer. Uh, I didn't. I didn't mention any weight class. Mm -hmm. We can do without any weight class. I never mentioned a weight class. Of course, I know that he 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 won't be able to to come down to one forty five, even at one fifty five. But who cares about the weight? We can we can fight without the weight weight limit. So you're That's ready not... to move up. You're ready to move up anywhere for Connor. Of course, with Connor, yes, of course. The thing is, you know, I don't see any fight that makes more sense for him and for me at this point, you know, because look at the at the past, what he did in in, in, in the last four years. He beat nobody. He just uh, he, he just lose so, so many fights. But he he lives and he survives in this board because everything he he has achieved in the past. But right now in the sport he's nobody. I don't know if he, he he's even ranked. So if he feels ready for the for this level of competition and he wants to put his name again here, I'm the fight without any doubt. But if he feels like he's close to retirement and he just wanna entertain himself. Of course, he can go and fight where with whoever he wants. But he, but if he really wants to uh, keep in in this sport as a fighter, no, as a superstar, and I'm just a superstar, he has to face me and he has to fight me because that's the only fight that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What weight would you be comfortable up to? How far do you see yourself going up? In I, I, like I told you, I don't care about the weight. We can do it without the weight limit. Mm -hmm. uh, that fight takes place probably in Europe, huh? Yeah, of course. We're both from Europe. In, in, in Madrid, in Spain, it will be huge for, for, for the people, you know? A lot of people would come there and watch the fight. It will be great. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. If he wants to... to the Red Panty Knights again, there is no one else that makes more sense than me. If he wants it, I will be there. Mm -hmm. But after this fight, mm -hmm. I'll because leave if, if, if I go and I, I make one, one title defense and he going to start to call me out and he gets, gets his ass whooped, I don't know, for two more fighters or one more, I didn't have any more interest on, on him. So now is the perfect timing. If he feels ready, we can do it. If not, he can go and fuck himself and keep drinking whiskey and taking, I don't know what he's taking, but no, nothing good. You know, with Conor McGregor, he's universally and internationally known as one of the faces of UFC all time. But you yeah. see yourself as the next star, as the next face of the UFC. Why is that? And what are the promises you could make moving forward into 2024 and beyond as to what your legacy could look like? So, the, the to be honest, I think so because I know that I can go out from just the MMA world, you know, from the UFC world. When you're able to do that and you can connect with the, with the world outside the UFC and outside the MMA, you can become a UFC. You can become a a superstar if you're able to do that. And of course, I'm able to do that. I'm already do it. So we'll see what the future is holding for me. I just want to keep being happy. You know, that's my my main goal: to be happy. Anything else will come. I trust God. I just work tirelessly. I have faith and everything will come. I don't want to pressure anything. Absolutely. Again, 14 and 0, going for your 15th win, UFC 298, February 17th against Alexander Volkanovsky for the featherweight title. Ilya Tapura promising to be the next face of the UFC and a star in the making. Uh, you're going to have uh, all. Uh, five re potential rounds to prove that on February 17, but sounds like it might not pass. Go I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make it done in one. Sh looks like I'll have a short night that night to go back home. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it's gonna be short, but this, but at the same time, you're gonna have a long night.
it's not the same five minutes under the ground and making love. So 